Hello, it's Bart from Nature Manufacture. At this tutorial, let's talk about materials and shaders. In our shader, we have a base color which is responsible for the base. So it is the material from which the object is built. In this example, it's marble texture. Uh, it's not responsible for all these cracks and shape structure, but for a color, uh, it could be clay, rock or sand, like we already showed in the Unity News tutorial where we replaced it with an AI system. So this is the base material, but we also have cover material that is responsible for snow, but it could be sand or even uh, marble second more destructed layer. It's just the second layer with the option to use top cover distribution shape part the shape part is responsible for all these cracks and the shape of the whole material it's responsible for the representation of what this object is it does not represent the material that was used to build this this wall but how it was built we also have leaks part by which you can modify the color of the wall it also can modify smoothness so leaks as dirt part of the wall will be less reflective we also have a wet or heat checkbox to decide if the object will become heated or become wet if we modify the red vertex color of the mesh now we will play with this material step by step first of all you could use planar or non-planar uv on the base cover or shape for walls we would rather use typical uv but for parts and pavement cover materials that will blend with unity terrain it's better to use planar uv let's look at this bridge it was built from multiple meshes but the connection between them is seamless it's all because of planar uv what if we switch it to non-planar at the base map, nothing strange will happen, but if we do this at shape, it will break uh, tiling and connection between meshes. That's why we use planner for objects that must be blended, even if they have different UV scale and rotation, but we have to get one solid seamless but object from them. In this example, column, we use different UVs, at UV0 we hold information about the shape. UV0 is about how the column looks. Its shape normal map is responsible for cracks and edges of the object. The tilled uh, texture which represents the material that was used to build that column uses UV2. That is why there are different UVs used. Uh, we separate tilled and non-tiled parts of the material. We spend one UV to hold shape information while the second UV is flexible tilled material. Let's play now with the cover part of the material on this rough example. Uh, you can modify the cover amount to decide how much cover you want. Angle value modifies which slope is acceptable for the cover. Uh, you can see that the snow appears at a specific angle which you can adjust with hardness. You can modify how sharp the angle roll is. Cover amount grow speed is used to synchronize snow or cover between materials. Remember that cover may use height map and to synchronization moment when snow appears on different material we add value that can boost or reduce the covering process. So this option is rather useful when you have real-time snow cover uh, in your world and you want to place snow on each material in a similar moment or for the opposite effect. So desynchronize that. For example, roads will slowly uh, get snow cover in opposition to grass around. I told you that the cover may use height map for blending. You have few options here. You may modify how the cover texture height affects the cover. You can, for example, turn it off and based on 
shape height map only. The top cover height map is saved on the mask map blue channel. On screen, you may notice that uh, it represents simply higher and lower levels of snow. That's why when we use it, we have lower and higher snow levels on the pavement. Sometimes it generates holes without snow. It's a nice effect to cut the generic look of the material and mix it a bit. Let's play with shape height a bit. It also affects snow cover, I would say, even more or the most. If we turn off the shape height map, we get solid top snow cover, which gets holes only from the cover height map. If we mask it by shape, we can place snow in the holes between bricks. Um, to understand that it's a bit inverted situation, you have to look at brick shape height. You may notice that the space between the bricks is black. If we want to place snow there, we need to invert height map by remap values in material. Sure, we can leave it not inverted, but the effect would be rather like fresh snow, not the old one which resists only in holes. You may notice that snow without invert is still placed on top of the bricks and avoid holes. This is how to behave fresh snow. You can play with this and get nice different effects. For our goal and tutorial we will keep shape height map inverted. We can increase or decrease snow amount via height map remap. You can achieve very nice effects and you have full control over it. The cover is not only about base color. You can control how much normal will pass through the snow so you can accent the surface under the snow a bit. It's not only designed for snow but as snow you can use just a second marble or rock material and still hold the shape normal on it. It's an artistic part where you can adjust how materials influence each other. Let's go to the rock object and play a bit with snow cover options. In our shader you may even set the influence of the base and shape normals on the snow cover. Height map rather contains information about if something is higher or lower, but only normal may give more information about the world direction of this rock small detail. A normal map is more detailed than a height map and it's oriented in the world. It helps you to cover or uncover details of the surface in relation world direction. It's another artistic slider that you really can play with it. Snow probably will not use this feature so much, but sand will get a nice uh, realistic effect. Uh, normal maps will influence the cover mask and it will fill the rock with sand in every small hole. Let's back to the pavement uh, surface, which we paint by vertex color uh, in the last tutorial, which was about the tools and features. You can paint uh, surface with, with vertex color. You can control vertex color sharpness and mix power with these two sliders. You can play a bit with them and readjust how smooth the vertex color uh, mixes. But remember, it also affects uh, high blend as the vertex color mask becomes more or less sharp. The next part of the shader is curvature. We will modify it on this tone guard as it has a lot of small details. The curvature is part of the shape mask map. We save it as a red channel on shape texture. It's used to display small details of the object. Remember that shape textures don't have their own color as they use base color. You can create it for your own textures with our mask generator tool, which we show in the Nitty Muse tutorial video. Okay, the almost last part of the shader are leaks. You may notice that the leak mask is on shape texture. It's responsible for marking where leaks may show up. There is also a leak texture that uses a red channel and it's tilled uh, texture responsible for leaks character. This texture could be shared between multiple objects and materials at the scene to optimize texture usage at the project. 
you can add color to your materials using Lix color. There is a separate value for cover and the base. As an example, let's look at rock. It has snow cover. We rather don't want to influence snow by leaks. Leaks are long ter term effects on stones, while snow appears and disappears in a short time. So it shouldn't have leaks. The last feature is emission. You may notice there is a snow emission mask on the material. To save texture and GPU usage, we took ambient occlusion map as uh, source data for emission. All these emissive cracks at the screen come from the base cover and shape ambient occlusion textures. You have uh, separated sliders to control each layer. As the sand cover texture is completely different from the rock, I can show you how nicely it, it becomes heated. Look at this rock. Uh, emission has a heated sand character. You have full control over the render on these rocks. You can increase and decrease also shape influence in the emissive part of the shader as well. Uh, so the deeper cracks and holes uh, become heated as well. There is also something called rim light power. This effect only appears when the angle between the camera and the surface is low. Uh, if you are in front of the surface, this effect will disappear. I would say this imitates a bit volumetric effect of the emission. You can play with this value to create a nice effect on the heated surface. The last emission part is noise. To remove the static effect of the emissive material, we have the option to increase and decrease emission power uh, periodically. You can speed up or slow down the emissive amplitude period. The scene with multiple emissive materials will not look so static and generic with this option. For the final few words about the shader, I may say that if you check multiple materials in a project, you may uh, change or remove snow from the whole scene at once with a single slider. You may change the distribution way as well. It means that you can dynamically cover the whole castle and environment around by snow uh, in a few seconds with a single slider. And that's all with this uh, shader. There is another last shader that we may mention shortly. Uh, it's available at HD and URP pipeline. It's rather for users which may say two layers are not enough. Layered shape shader allows you to blend uh, base one with base two, cover and shape at the same time. Let's change this material to a layered version and play with settings for a moment. For a second layer, we may choose a marble white version. So I drag and drop new texture sets into the material. You still can use vertex color and set up blend between these two layers. Uh, so you will achieve your goal effect. The way of blending truly depends on which types of materials you want to blend. It depends if your intention for the second layer is just additional noise or if you want to change the material type to more destroyed. As a second example, I will blend sharp rock material with this marble. It will imitate an old abandoned path with uh, rocks that pop up from the marble. Let's choose a nice and sharp rock texture and fill the material with its normal and mask map. So we will get full information about uh, PBR material aspect and of course the height map that we use for blending. Now we can uh, find some vertex colors so we will have more rocks on the, the marble surface. Uh, let's adjust the, the tiling of the material so the rocks will become bigger and more visible. We can remove the sand cover via vertex color marker to show up a bit of rock texture so we can uh, set up height blending uh, a bit between marble and rocks. So now to make a contrast between rocks and marble, 
we will set the minimum height value to the lower and the maximum value to the higher values. This creates space for contrast in the texture. Remember that this may reduce blend resolution because we start to play with single pixels. This may generate the effect that you will start to see single square uh, pixels on the blend area. It's because the texture or Unity import setting is set to a low amount of bits for a height map. Let's remove the sand cover uh, texture to clarify what blending between these two layers looks like. Now we see a very uh, nice blend between rock and marble. In exactly such a way, you may create destructed, abandoned old materials. Okay, it's all for the shaders tutorial. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you learn enough to build your own or modify already existing materials. So, see you soon on our other tutorials related to level design and our asset. Like, always share your feedback with us.